Okay. So, remember we have been discussing about uh, different kind of challenges uh, for the managers when they are going to implement knowledge management system in organizations and some of these challenges or concerns are related to ethics and legality or moral issues may be there. Similarly, there are a lot of challenges for managers uh, at different stages of knowledge management systems and different kind of issues and concerns may be there. So, what we are going to discuss now is some of the workplace challenges and what, what kind of role uh, managers as well as knowledge managers especially those who are at the helm of affairs of managing knowledge system are going to have and then how they are going to re resolve it. So, they must be aware about these kind of things, so that they can take proactive actions and as, as and when it is required, they can also take certain actions to prevent such things in the future. Now, if you look at some of the challenges like uh, access to the information, right? most of the places will find that people hold information. Okay? Sometimes the system is not available, it is not working. So, it could be related to behavior also, where hoarding is there or it could be related to the system, where there could be some technical issues, because of which accessibility becomes a problem. Similarly, you also need to see that <coughs> the other issues like how uh, man machine interface takes place. Okay. The people who are going to work with these machines, how comfortable and stress free they, seem they find themselves and that area is known as ergonomics. So, basically uh, ergonomics talks about comfortability of the people when they are going to work with any machine or any, any kind of system. right? It is very much required. For example, even if you are sitting and working in the front of computers, okay. so the chairs has to be designed in such a way so that you don't feel in any kind of stress, physical stress or mental stress. So that deals with ergonomic. Then another issue is related to outsourcing. Then uh, outsourcing means whether you are going to buy in or build in those kind of systems. These are the things that is to be decided by the managers. Then telecommuting, whether you allow people to work from home or not that is another issue. Then how are we going to manage our customers, okay, how are we going to manage our vendors. So, these questions pose lot of challenges to them. Then you also need to see that whether IT professionals uh, be in the business of the ethics or it is the responsibility of the managers, uh, top management, senior managers, subordinate managers or even those are at the helm of the affairs, knowledge managers. Right. Similarly, there is another issue that how are we going to monitor the use of the system. Okay. For example, <coughs> there are some companies which monitor email of the employees. Okay. Are you supposed to monitor private emails or not? So, that becomes an ethical issue for the managers and then they have a, they should have a policy to decide whether they are going to uh, monitor private emails or not or whether they should be allowed to have access to private e emails during the working time. So, uh, uh, it has been found from the research, especially from the US, it has been found that there are two major websites which American people see even at the workplace and that, that is ESPN which is a sports channel. So, they lot of watch sports if internet access is there because they do not need to spend money, but you have to see whether it is ethical or not. Similarly, they also watch Playboy, okay. it is a porn site, but it is the most often the most frequently wa watched site even during the working hours. So, these kind of challenges are there for the managers to see that how they are going to use the restricts whether it is going to be ethical use and what kind of things or policy should be there in the place. So, in accordance with that we also need to see that should there be a policy for monitoring email or interne internet use and then again you have to see whether it is legal or ethical in nature or not. So, some companies have uh, written email policies or internet policy as well as software policy and th th they decide that okay, these are the things or activities which are allowed over the internet okay. and similarly you will also find that they also uh, restrict the use of uh, certain websites uh, by putting certain systems in place. Okay. So, that people are not able to have access to those websites okay, and they will not be able to watch those sites right and uh, if you are going to violate these policies then there there is a possibility that employers might take certain actions against you okay so you should know what are the different kind of policies related to use of softwares right use of internet use of email and these kind of things 
So, because they might be having a servers where they are going to monitor your uh, use of internet and emails and they can see that what you are doing with your internet and computer facility, especially in IT professionals have this monitoring uh, activities in place in their organizations. right? And <coughs> sometimes it has been found that I mean the employees have gone to the court or the employers have also gone to the courts and uh, there are lawsuits against employers because they say that okay, employers are not supposed to uh, interfere with the private emails or what they are going to watch and see, but that is okay. But when you are going to be there the workplace you are supposed to work for the organization, you are not supposed to do something that is private in nature. Okay. Similarly, uh, there could be a policy on sexual harassment okay. uh, and that is why you know that uh, the government has come out with the sexual harassment acts and everybody need to be communicated and should be aware about what constitutes a sexual harassment and what kind of actions may be taken. And if anybody is found guilty then what kind of action can be taken right, when you are going to use IT for these kind of activities. So, this poses a lot of challenge for the managers. Similarly, uh, another area of importance you know that when you are going to down music, okay, music files or video files, so these kind of things. Okay. You, you know that we download lot of uh, music or share uh, music with others using internet okay. and you know that uh, uh, that it is not legal, but they know that they cannot be caught in the process and that is why they are not worried about it. Okay. Uh, it has been found that in many countries it happens uh, where you are going to share or download music inter uh, using internets and America has a policy regarding this, India also there is a privacy policy and if you are caught then there could be legal actions against you okay. and then there is a possibility that these websites may block downloading or they have systems in such a way. So, that they do not allow you to download uh, musics or any kind of things relate to that one. Okay. Now, uh, the most uh, possible abuse uh, that has happened is related to the use of computing right. Uh, when you are going to use uh, computers at the workplace or even the classrooms right. For example, you will find that um, uh, you know the, with the advent of uh, computers and smartphones, people bring their laptops, computers, smartphones even in the classroom. So, how are we going to uh, allow them or not allow them to use or restrict the use of uh, these kind of uh, say computing facilities during the class right. So, <coughs> for example, they may even record the entire lecture right, which is again infringement of intellectual property right then whether you should allow them to have internet access at the workplace or even in the classroom. Okay. So, and there are lot of technologies that people are using uh, on and off the workplace like using internet, okay, uh, smartphones, messengers, activities, ch chatting on Facebook and these kind of things. Right. Then uh, these create lot of problems because if you are using these things uh, especially during the working hours or the class hours, it, it not only distract others, but it also you are also lose losing the productive time during which you are supposed to do something else right. So, most of the companies have these kind of policies related to email computer usage okay. Then another issue that has come up of late is uh, computer related crimes like cyber crimes okay, where your computer might be affected by viruses, you might be hackers, there could be theft of the data and uh, these kind of things. So, uh, there is a need to see that how we are going to stop and prevent these activities. That that is why you have uh, antivirus, antivirus systems in place. You also need to ensure that your system is so robust, so that you are not, it is not going to be hacked. Okay. Uh, you may, uh, you may also have heard about ethical hackers, uh, where you are going to allow them to use or uh, hack certain things in the interest of the masses. But that is again debatable whether, for example, if you have a knowledge management system in place would you allow it to be hacked by others or not okay. even if it is going to be used by others because it is again the questions related to intellectual property comes into the picture. So, basically you have to see that those people who are engaged in these kind of things have created legal issues for the organization not only ethical issues. Okay. So, <coughs> moving further we are going to discuss a major challenge related to intellectual property okay. because that has become a major challenge for the organizations. Now, if you look at intellectual property, we have a body known as uh, World Inter Intellectual Property Organization WIPO and basically WIPO is supposed to 
maintain and regulate activities related to intellectual property or even granting patent and uh, these kind of rights. Right. So, uh, if you look at intellectual property issues, this could be related to copywriting, licensing, okay, inter, inter uh, per, para abilities, okay, then licensing issues okay, like cyber licensing, shrink wrap, shareware, freeware. So, these are some of the licensing that um, could be arranged and then you have to see that you are going to pay for these licenses, if you are going to make use it. Right. For example, if when you are going to buy a, sec, a software okay, and then you have to subscribe it for a particular period and then again next year again you have to go for renewal. For example, when you are using SPSS for statistical analysis, okay, it is a software which is copyrighted by IBM. Now, when you want to use it, then you have to get a license for use it or you have to subscribe by paying certain fees. Okay for a, a limited period and then again you have to go for a review, because most of these things are not available free. So, if you are hacking these software and using them that is not only unethical, but it is also illegal then using mp 3 files right. There could there have been quotation against college students when uh, regarding the mp 3 files or uh, again there have been cases about using the university internet users and this kind of cases especially in uh, many countries it has been found that yes, uh, they have been uh, engaged students uh, especially in those kind of activities which could be treated within court not only ethical, but also legal right. Then uh, you we all uh, download files using internet okay, from different websites depending upon our, our requirement. It could be word files, PDF, PPTs right. We also copy and paste graphics or text. Now, the question is that uh, it all these uh, things are protected under the copyright. Now, the thing is if it is protected under the copyright are you allowed or you are, you ha have you got earlier permission to use it. If it is not so, then you are covered by the intellectual property rights issues and there could be legal cases against you. And sometimes if you are using it you also either quote the source, so that you are not going to be prosecuted by the court of the law. Okay. Then uh, there are issues related to granting patents and then having trade secrets and copyright laws. Okay. Now, you have to see that who owns the program, when if it is related to knowledge management system you have developed it. So, are you going for patenting it, just like any product uh, patent or innovative product patent, uh, patenting or when you are going to uh, go for a process innovation and then you go for invention uh, uh, say patenting right. Then uh, who knows the uh, or owns the algorithm, algorithm means the process the systems through which certain things are being done. And if you have devised it then you own the copyright you are going to file a patent okay, in the uh, under the patent law and then the patent would be granted right. Then we also have issues related to piracies, okay, piracies of the software. Where most of the people uh, not only in India, but most of the countries use pirated versions of the software. Let me give an example, even for statistical analysis you will you can find pirated version of SPSS that is statistical package for social sciences. Okay. So, if you are using a pi pirated version what will happen, whether you should use or not use. Okay. If you are going to use it is going to help you to do your analysis, but if you do not use then you are, you are it is going to put you under a lot of burden. So, far as cost is concerned because you are going to pay for it and then only you can use it. Okay. But if you are not going to pay the those who have developed are going to lose certain money because it has a commerce value. right? So, if like uh, people uh, go for pirating say videos, music, okay, films. So, this this piracy exists everywhere in all fields not only in the field of softwares. Then and that because of this piracy what happens? The companies are organizations who have done lot of work and put in lot of effort time and resources in developing those softwares are going to lose money or because it has it has the potential to re generate lot of re revenue, but if it is pirated you are going to use it means you are not going to pay for it and that is where you can say that yes use of pirated software is not only unethical, but it is also illegal okay. and it has been found that even in software industry uh, industries have been losing almost 12 billion per year, which is not a less amount right. 
and then uh, there, ha there are studies uh, related to industry wise where it has been found that it has been done. Like in CD ROMs are going to copy certain things music, files, videos, pictures and then you are going to see it, which is not legal or ethical in behavior right. Then there are other uh, challenges like how are going to use and uh, uh, make decisions using expert systems, okay, which is a higher version of, uh, of what you call the de uh, decision taking process. right? Then the issues related to the network security, right? Uh, that how are going to secure a network, whether you are going to have a robust system, whether things are being encrypted, whether you have the technology in place to ensure that your network is secure, it is not being hacked, privacy and confidentiality of the knowledge is being maintained or not. And then similarly also look at issues about the software, okay? whether your software is accurate and reliable, it means th that whether it is giving consistent results, whether, whether it is a valid software which is providing the results that you are expected. Because if it is not reliable and valid then the persons who are developing these softwares are going to be held ethically responsible. Okay. Then moving further <coughs> uh, especially related to computers and networks, let us see that what, what about computer ethics? Why you are talking about computer ethics? It is a, a, I mean not only in India, but uh, across the globe it has become a major issue today. Okay. The reason is that uh, there are people who can afford it and people who cannot afford it. So, there is a wide, wide gap which exists between the rich and poor. Okay. Not because you have people who are living in underdeveloped uh, countries or those who are living in developing countries. Okay. So, the access is info access of information is not equal. So, what the is the what the way out is that they are going to resort to certain unethical and unlegal approaches like using pirated softwares okay, and these kind of things because they cannot afford it. Okay. So, you have to see that whether we can handle this problem or can reduce such kind of unethical and uh, immoral behavior. Okay because there is the inequality of access to information. Okay. People in developed countries have access to information. Similarly, people in develop, developing countries or underdeveloped countries do not have access to the information, which provides them a, a, does not provide them a level playing field and they become unequal on that accept. And that is why there is resort to uh, these kind of activities. right? And since you do not have access to information, then you are deprived from job opportunities, entertainment, care, shopping, these kind of things, and that is why you resort to these kind of activities. Okay, so if you are connected to a, a good network, information uh, network, then probably you have the access to information, and then you can have uh, access to opportunities and all kind of activities that you want to take up. Now, then uh, another question is that in cyberspace, which law is going to be applied? Okay. Uh, because there could be a number of countries which are involved in the global network. Okay. Whether the per person who is going to be engaged in unethical or illegal behavior, his home country or fr from where he has done it, that country or the software that is developed by some country, there he is going to be sued for that. So, these are some of the issues related to uh, cyberspace laws. Okay. In India also we have cyberspace laws and any crime that is committed in the law plan would be dealt by the cyber laws of the country. Okay. Now, another issue is that <coughs> suppose we know that we are doing something that is wrong okay. or suppose some, some, something that is being done by us which is right, but it goes wrong. Okay. It means that you have not trained your people to behave ethically and it is very, very important. Okay. So, it is very important to tell them and train them to know or make them aware that what is ethical behavior and what are the things that they should do or what are the things that they should not do. Okay. And similarly, in not only inculcating ethical behavior, but you should also try to see that you have rules and regulations control mechanism in place, which will deter people not to engage in any kind of unethical or illegal behavior. Right. Now, you have to measure uh, that how unethical or illegal behavior uh, is being uh, done by people across the world and you can see that uh, you know that now you have lot of indexes okay, the most corrupt countries, most unethical countries okay, 
and these kind of indexes have come up which tells okay the cost uh, the ranking of the countries where you can find out okay which country is most corrupt where the people are most corrupt uh, where people are engaged mostly in unethical behavior or illegal behaviors where the crime rate is very high and this kind of data is available today which can tell you that okay what are what is happening across the world and then you can take certain policy measures you can also devise certain code of conduct to change and to ensure that what constitute ethical and legal behavior now moving further uh, we are going to talk about another issue which is very important is leadership issues in knowledge management right you know that if you look at the structure of the organization okay uh, you also need to see that where does came leadership stand vis a vis in the structure okay now if you look at the structure of an organization a uh, ceo who is responsible for that running the organization he is also responsible to ensure that km system runs effectively for the benefit of the organization okay so most of the organizations have adopted certain practices where they are appointing uh, specifically to look after these kind of issues like they have appointed chief knowledge officers chief learning officers or chief information officers okay now these people directly report to the ceo of the company so now if you look at their position they may not be a part of the mechanically structured or formally structured part of the organization okay they could be loosely associated with the formal structure but at the same time they would also be reporting to the head of the institution or the organization right now if you look at chief information officers or chief learning officers or chief knowledge officers these are being appointed by the management to ensure two things that how the knowledge is going to be management managed in the organization and how learning and development activities are going to be taken care of the people right now if you look at uh, the chief knowledge officer he is supposed to look at the technical and social aspects of the knowledge management now if you look at the chief learning officer basically or uh, chief information officer uh, he is also responsible for knowledge management but he is going to look after more on social aspects than the technical aspects similarly if you look at the role of chief learning officer okay he be, as i told you that he is mostly concerned with uh, social aspects and he is responsible for learning and development activities of the organization because if learning and development activity is very very important so he is going to decide what could be the strategy what is the process what kind of systems should be in place so that people uh, develop those competencies which are required by the organization okay so if you look at the role of ceo uh, sorry clo that is chief learning officer of chief inf uh, information officer they are primarily responsible for employee development or what you call human resource development right so uh, they are basically engaged in activities like uh, training and development coaching mentoring counseling and uh, through which they try to develop those activities uh, sorry those uh, competencies which are critical for the organization to perform well right now the idea is that you can also use it uh, uh, as a process and then uh, if you have suppose training systems as a part of the knowledge management which could be used by them and that is why you know that uh, now uh, nowadays we have a uh, far more developed computer based uh, training systems okay a computer assisted training sy system so the entire thing is put on the computer in the system and then people can learn it at their own pace and easy okay and then that is how they are going to develop the critical knowledge which is required for performance now if you look at uh, chief knowledge officer they have uh, all together have a different kind of role and they are basically responsible to manage the intellectual capital of the organization right and that is the human capital and also look after the knowledge management activity starting from the scratch to implementing a knowledge management system in the organization right so they are good in technology they also know the business they also take assistance of it people to see that how the, they can create a environment so that people are really interested to develop create and share knowledge in the organization so for that matter uh, if you look at km system it is the responsibility of the chief knowledge officer who is in a who in a reporting relationship is going to report to chief executive officer directly and he is at the helm of the affairs who is responsible for developing a knowledge management system and also ensure that it is being effectively utilized 
Now, if you look at uh, the uh, initiatives that is taken by chief knowledge officers, both for tacit and explicit knowledge, and what kind of initiative he can take, uh, this was like this at the organization level at explicit uh, in the explicit form, he is responsible for ensuring that yes, how the expertise of the people can be utilized, right. So, what he is going to do? He is going to see that yes, he is going to leverage the competencies of the people, that is use the competencies of the people to create and nurture knowledge, right. And he is going to link it with a reward structures, he is going to decide about the processes through which happens, he is going to ensure uh, that people develop those competencies, right, and also create a climate for knowledge sharing, right. Now, if you look at the kind of initiative is supposed to take for developing a knowledge management system, that is the technical part, he is going to see that knowledge directories are developed, there are knowledge channels, okay, how is intranet is going to be developed so that knowledge can be retrieved from the knowledge management systems, right. He also ensures that yes, people are there to support these kind of activities and then he is going to see that how people come together, collaborate with each other to solve problems in the work group, right. And then he has also sees that okay, through collaborations, teamwork and these kind of activities, how people are going to learn from each other and whatever lessons are learned, how it is going to be documented. That is related to the explicit part. Now, if you look at the initiatives which is related to tacit part, it says that you are how you are going to benchmark, you are going to develop certain communities of practice which could be standardized, right. So, you also need to develop micro communities in the groups of people who are knowledgeable, right. They could be people from cross functional areas, okay, across departments, across firms also from the same organization, okay. And you have to see that how this tacit knowledge could be converted or transformed into explicit form. Then you, at the same time, you also need to create uh, channels for uh, tacit exchange. It could be at the personal level, like face to face interactions, okay, uh, through video conferencing, okay, whiteboards, uh, uh, capturing assumptions and ideas of the people. So, there could be a lot of uh, technical support that is required to capture the tacit knowledge of the people. So, if you look at the CQO, CQO or the chief knowledge officer, he has lot of responsibility in that with that regard and he is going to be involved in these kind of activities. Similarly, he also need to link reward with success of the knowledge management, right. He need to motivate pe uh, people or employees to see that they are going to use knowledge management system and if they create not only use knowledge, but they also create knowledge, right and then the knowledge is there in the game system, so that people can use it. Similarly, he also need to un, uh, understand that yes, the employees are going to treat it as considered as a part of their job, ok. So, it should also be considered as a part of the job description. So, <coughs> linking incentives and motivation is very, very important, because uh, if you do not provide incentives for knowledge creation, knowledge sharing, ok use of knowledge for productive purposes and if they are able to use knowledge to reduce uh, cost, improve quality, increase efficiency, then, then they must be uh, rewarded for that purpose, right. So, you have to see that the groups or the individuals who are using these, right, you have to see that based on their performance of the uses of the knowledge management system, they are being suitably rewarded, right. Similarly, individuals who are going to capture knowledge are those who are going to be able to transform uh, tacit knowledge to explicit knowledge, they are also being rewarded, ok. Similarly, uh, you need to uh, announce rewards, different kind of monetary, non-monetary rewards, like you can create uh, a award, non-monetary non award like knowledge champions. So, you, you can announce every month who is the knowledge champion, the person who is going to create knowledge or share knowledge. And you can also make uh, use uh, of the performance of project system by including knowledge sharing as one of the entity in the performance management system. So, those uh, who are going to share their knowledge, okay, they should be uh, basically evaluated it as a criteria for performance management or performance appraisal system. And if organization is getting benefited out of it, this need to be communicated to the people that yes, look at it, how the organization has benefited by using the knowledge management system, right. So, incentives and motivation are very, very important. Now, if you look at this, uh, you can see that how knowledge management leadership is going to learn or uh, nurture or create a learning and sharing culture, right. Uh, both in both kind of environment, whether it, whether it is stable environment or mobile environment, okay. Uh, so, they need to create a learning culture, which is basically project oriented in or 
in a mobile uh, environment basically it they need to create a sharing culture. So, that people are ready to share their knowledge with each other right. So, <coughs> you have to see that yes that KM leadership has to take responsibility for learning and sharing uh, knowledge and unless you create a learning and sharing, sharing culture you cannot think about sharing knowledge for the benefit of the organize. Then HR is also very important uh, probably we, we overlook or do not look at the role of the HR in the knowledge management system because it is the responsibility the of the HR to ensure that the team is strengthened and they work up to the task right. So, they are supposed to provide training and development activities, they are looking into their performance management system, talent recruitment and these kind of things. Now, you have to see that what roles HRM is going to play in the process right. If you look at this they can act as human capital steward, it means create environment and culture where people voluntarily contribute skills ideas right. Then they are supposed to be knowledge facilitator, it means that you have to enable people to see that they they have access to the information that is there in the knowledge management system right, which is going to provide competitive advantage. Similarly, they also need to see that implies develop those critical competencies which will help them to create new uh, knowledge. Then they also supposed to develop good relationship at the workplace. So, they need to facilitate a structure ok practices and culture which allows people to have good relationship because unless you create a collaborative culture you cannot expect people to share their knowledge right. Then you also need to uh, see that you how you are going to adapt to the culture and systems of the place. And finally, we are going to discuss that yes, it is not the technical part which is important, but there are a lot of human related issues which comes into the picture right. So, you have to see that how are going to allow team members and motivate them to create new knowledge ok. And it is the responsibility of the leadership not only the HR leadership, but also the top management and the KM leadership ok. And then you have to see that how are we to facilitate these knowledge workers to perform their job effectively. So, you need to provide all kind of resources, support and commitment to ensure that knowledge workers are allowed to use their competencies to be efficient ok. Similarly, you are they should also be allowed to participate in the decision making process right, because that will internally intrinsically motivate them ok. Apart from extrinsic benefits like reward and other things, you need to ensure that when they are going to participate in the decision making process, it is going to be intrinsically motivated for them ok. And then you can also encourage them, so that they learn ok and then earn a living on a regular basis. Because if they are motivated and they are being rewarded for these kind of activities probably, it, it would it would strengthen and it become a part of the habit ok. And that is why if you look at it, what we have considered here is three major issues ethical, legal and managerial issues when you are going to develop a knowledge management system. Thank you very much.